Hello and welcome to another update video about NetGas. NetGas starts um, very, very good into the new year. Okay, uh, very positive. At least we have a gap to the upside, um, but that's not unexpected anyway. Uh, we have literally only with this gap now, and with this spike actually, um, with this gap up, we have entered our target area for this move. And we are going to explore that now further. Bigger picture. Um, Quick summary from what we highlighted last time. Obviously, we are dealing here with the um, this is the February contract. We are dealing with the five wave move to the downside on the net gas chart. This move down could complete a correction that started in 2022. Yeah, so this long term correction to the downside. Um, we have been waiting throughout the whole year last year <laughs> throughout throughout last year um, and many of you will will remember that we have been waiting patiently for another low and we are there okay so that low has happened this was really really boring sideways action i mean between march april all the way into october literally nothing happened i appreciate everybody who still um what, you know, who is still watching my pretty much daily net gas videos <laughs> throughout throughout 2023, even though there wasn't really much going on. Um, it was a very, very boring um, structure. Anyway, you know, the idea was for another low. That one more low happened. Um, it still looks like we could get another marginally lower low, possibly targeting round about $1.70 to $1.90 roughly okay the idea is that um, we're forming here this three four five pattern and in the way five one two three four five so basically one more low missing but that's really just a marginally lower low if you consider the context and if you consider where we come from and that this literally could then be a long-term low okay that could take us way above like let's say six seven eight dollars um, eventually okay so Let's explore this because this is interesting for most of you. This still looks like um, a potential bearish flag. We talked about that, um, that this is just a, it looks at least like a consolidation at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we can interpret the chart, you know, in different ways. Obviously, it's the, the actual interpretation of the wave count is always to a degree subjective. What is objective though, and that is what many, many um, people miss who don't deal with Elliott Wave regularly um, or who criticize Elliott Wave actually for being subjective. Surely, I mean, like any TA is, is subjective, isn't it? I mean, any analysis method is subjective. It's subjective where you put trend lines. It's subjective how you interpret the RSI, um, whatever. There is so much ob uh, subjectivity. What the beauty here is, though, that there are clear guidelines and rules and one very reliable guideline is that a wave four, and they, I see this as a wave four rally, that a wave four should not move beyond the 50% retracement. And that level is at $2.92 pretty much. So if we get a sustained break above that level and that introduces the degree of objectivity, okay, um, quite a bit of a degree of objectivity if that level breaks you know the low is in and then we we have to assume that obviously there's a little bit more to it you know how do we break it and so on but that's um, a reliable level you know if that's broken then i'm going to watch for um, a potentially corrective pullback afterwards instead of another move down to lower lows but a corrective pullback just means we're likely going to form a higher low in a pullback which could be then a pullback entry point basically uh, primary scenario is one more low first of all because the wave count suggests it and then because the move up looks quite choppy and also we have literally only just now reached um, the target range for this wave four and um, yeah but the alternative would be the low is already in okay and because it's literally just okay is the low here or there um, looking at the bigger picture it nearly doesn't matter but looking here at the short term there isn't any evidence yet that the lasting low has been established uh, I've got an A, B, C structure. The forecast was for the C wave to stretch a little higher. One wave count that I gave you was here, A, B, and then one, two, three, four, and possibly five. With this C wave to the upside, it could be done. Um, 
However, I also mentioned that I need to change the micro count because let me just double check something. Uh, yeah, because this third really, really only reached the bare minimum of what it needs to reach. So I cannot rule out that the wave three sits here. Okay. And then there will be another four and another five. So I just want to mention that that has to do with the Fibonacci levels. Um, again, objectivity. The thing is though, it just reached the, it reached the minimum. So it's acceptable for a wave three, but I would trust it a little more had it reached $2.60 instead of 257 in the third wave. Anyway, um, I highlighted to you that this C wave should ideally end in the area between 263 and 287. Um, there are some FIP levels also, it's two, 272 and 277. Um, but if it breaks above 292, yeah, I, I have to say look, the low was probably in. Uh, let's see when we get the first pullback for a potential pullback entry point zone. But for now, it's just doing what it, um, yeah, what the, what the script what the script told it and pay attention to these levels next. Let's see if we get a reaction, a break now below the, well, probably rather here, a break below $2.41 would suggest that a top has formed in wave four. And then we'll watch for that wave five to unfold to the downside. That's my update about net gas. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also, make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. And yeah, if you're interested in daily updates about the S&P 500 and regular updates about stocks, you'll find our S&P membership in the description as well. It's the Patreon membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.